What is real? We all have some sort of answer to this question. What is yours? Is reality the world as you perceive it? Is reality the objects of science such as electrons and black holes? Is reality the divine forces that govern the universe such as imagined by religions and theology? What about numbers and the laws of mathematics? Are they in some sense real? That's some questions, let's examine some answers. This is Bebe Flapula's short philosophy. And yes, this is a very cool name for YouTube channel, thank you very much. So let's start with some common sense positions on reality and then allow ourselves to get weird and abstract later. Let's start with that what we can actually see. That's the first answer we'll consider. Reality is just what we see. This idea seems to suggest that our senses provide us with direct awareness of objects as they really are. We call this view direct realism since it suggests that we have direct access to reality as it really is. This view is also referred to as naive realism and common sense realism. You see a tree, this tree is real. You see your hands, these hands are real. <laughs> this seems like a satisfying idea. But many philosophers have rejected it. René Descartes, most notably, observed that our perceptions of what we usually take to be real often get distorted. Imagine the refraction you see when you put a straw in water, or optical illusions such as the Muller liar one. You are looking at two lines of the same length, but the surrounding elements distort how you view them. Another thing to consider are hallucinations. Sometimes we just see things that we don't really take to be there. Descartes proposed that what we really see aren't the objects themselves, but rather representations of them, sensory data that mediates our perception of the external objects thereof. In much the same way that pictures mediate what they portray. Take this picture for example. We have two explanations. Either the highest demons of hell have inflicted themselves upon the soul of this mortal, or we take into account how the picture mediates reality and how the specific characteristics of the camera lens created this red eye effect that we see. Commonly we take pictures to be faithful representations of what they are of, but in any case we have to interpret them, we don't just take everything they would display to be real. If this is how we view our perceptions of reality, we have adopted indirect or representational realism. John Locke noted that these representations often include things that can exist only for us. The perceivers. Things like colors, smell, taste. For example, when one sees an object as red, we don't take this redness to actually exist, but rather we say that it is produced by the arrangement of atoms on the surface of the object which reflects and absorbs light in a particular way. Reality in this view is not the redness that we see, but the atoms that form its underlying structure. This is roughly what Einstein meant when he said that reality is an illusion. Because from a point of view of a physicist, all of that which we see is an interaction of infinitesimally tiny strings of matter and energy fields. What's real in isn't really the tree we see outside our, our hands, it's the stuff that they are made of and the laws that bind it. If we think that reality is the world that is being described by science, we adopt scientific realism. I made a short introduction to this topic in another video, you can check that out if you're interested. Basically, the scientific realist states that it doesn't really matter if we don't see things like electrons and black holes with our own eyes. We can still make reliable claims about these things. We can still know them to be there and taking them into account, we can explain all of that which we perceive. This particular view is also called entity realism. Entity being a thing with distinct and independent existence. Not all scientific realists agree on that. Some would argue that we don't really have firm knowledge of these entities in the sense of knowing if they really exist and what they are really like, but we do know how they behave. Reality in this view is the mathematical description of the laws of nature. 
This view is also called structural realism, since it says that with science we gain access to the underlying structure of the world. So if we use mathematics to describe reality, what are numbers? Do numbers exist? Well, one argument in the philosophy of mathematics, commonly referred to as the quine putnam indispensability argument, states that since empirical science has to rely on mathematics, this gives us good reason to believe in the existence of mathematical entities. In this view, whenever a scientific theory refers to some mathematical entity, it is actually philosophically committed to the idea that this thing, this number, this equation, exists somewhere and in some sense. This theory can be considered to be a form of Platonism or Platonic realism. As you probably know, Plato postulated the independent existence of abstractions, such as the chairness of a chair and the humanity of a human. This idea was influential through the history of philosophy, especially in regards to the philosophy of language since it made sense with how the meanings of words were historically understood. Take just this example. When we say chair, supposedly we refer to a chair. But when we say good, what do we refer to? We can't refer to something that doesn't exist, that would make no sense. Therefore, this property of being good has to exist somewhere in the clouds, perhaps. I don't know, it is being widely disputed. This <laughs> is also the line of thought that led to the so-called ontological argument for the existence of God. When we say God doesn't exist, we first supposedly refer to this thing called God. And then we just deny its existence. If we were right, and this thing doesn't exist, what did we refer to? To nothing? Then it would seem that our statement was meaningless, because this would lead to a contradiction. According to the ontological argument, we have to accept the existence of God. The reason that we can talk about God is also proof that God exists. But what if I say that unicorns don't exist? So unicorns exist too, since denying them would lead to a contradiction. How about the claim round squares don't exist? Do we have to accept even the existence of things that are inherently contradictory? Alexius Meinung actually did bite this bullet and formulated a unique type of realism that claimed that just everything that you can and can't think of exists. This view is commonly referred to as Meinung's jungle because of how packed the universe seems to be according to this view. That's just weird and crazy, you might think. And yeah, even in philosophical literature, uh, theories like that get frowned upon. Platonism and Meinung's jungle get often described as being ontologically inflated. Ontology being the study of what exists and inflation referring to the theories needlessly multiplying the entities that they posit. All of this is in a direct and radical opposition with a philosophical rule of thumb called Occam's razor that prompts us to accept simpler theories about the world rather than complex ones. So there is some pressure in philosophy to reject these theories. Another thing to consider is that language doesn't really work that way. It's not some magical device that could directly refer to things in the world, but rather language maps words to ideas and concepts in our minds. When we use the word God, we're referring to this idea or concept that we have in our minds, not to something that lies outside of ourselves. Anyways, as you can see, when asked the question of what reality is, philosophers gave very different answers. And this right now got weird and abstract really fast. This tends to happen when our philosophical theories about what's real part from what we can perceive. That's also why the more common sense realism is so intuitively pleasing. It's simple. But there's also another view on perception that we have to consider. Let's go back to the representational realism for a moment. We said that reality, in this view, is mediated through our senses, it's distorted. But if all we have access to are these supposed representations, these ideas, 
Why do we think they actually represent anything? Since we never see what they represent. I mean, we never see the objects themselves. Therefore, for all we know, these objects themselves could just not exist. This idea was famously presented by George Berkeley. He adopted a theory of reality we call idealism. Ideas, these supposed representations, being the only things that actually exist. The only world that exists in this view are the ideas that we directly perceive. This idea was adopted by Immanuel Kant and in part the German idealists, only that Kant didn't really deny the existence of the objects themselves, he just denied that we have any access to them. So everything that we see exists only for us, the perceivers, and we have no way of knowing what things are like independently of us perceiving them. This idea marked the beginning of phenomenology. Edmund Husserl famously limited the discourse of philosophy from the world as it exists independently to only the phenomenal world, the world as we can perceive it. The only meaningful philosophy in this view is the one that deals with that which we can directly access, these ideas, these supposed representations. And everything else we say about the world is just pure speculation. So that's another line of thinking about our perceptions and reality. While a realist would say that what we see exists independently of us, at least in some part, an idealist might say that everything we observe is dependent on our perceptions of it. Okay, these were some answers on the question of what is real. Of course, it's a very controversial topic. I have presented the views that were perhaps historically most significant. Let me know in the comments what positions you think are worth to be mentioned. Roughly speaking, which one makes the most sense to you? If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. I'll do more of these in the future. Thanks for all the support. And yeah, that's it. Bye. I don't know what is real anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that man is beyond help. Oh, hi Mark. Psst, I'm contemplating the universe. Uh, I don't know what is real anymore. Huh. That man truly is a philosophical genius. <laughs>